Yeah. So, good. So, we have the next speaker here. It's uh, Abhinav here, uh, also like a long-term member already of the project. Um, he has been a Google Summer of Code uh, student. And uh, Abhinav, what's your background? So uh, basically, uh, I'm a computer science undergraduate right now. And uh, I'm really into web development. And I'm ex currently, I'm exploring uh, backend. Like I've worked on front end for the past two years. And now I'm dabbing into uh, using Flask and other backend. Django and other frameworks. So, for the front end project. Yeah, mentoring students in Google Summer yeah. of Code, which is upcoming soon, uh, one of our coding programs here with Open Event. Um, and uh, uh, where are you from? Which city and which university? Okay, I'm from uh, Indian Institute of Information Technology, Allahabad. And uh, originally, I, like, I live in Bhopal, but uh, in India. Uh, but currently, since I'm in the university, I'm staying in Allahabad. Okay. Thank you very much. And you are talking about EmberJS, how it empowers open event front end. A round of applause. So, uh, Dilpreet and uh, Shubham, they discussed, uh, like, they, you guys are aware by now that uh, we are using EmberJS. I'm going to delve into a uh, little deeper into why exactly we chose EmberJS and how it is benefiting the project in the long term and what short term uh, compromises we made. But which will ultimately result uh, in a better, better open source uh, environment for the users. So, uh, like as he said, AmberJS is uh, basically a normal MVC framework model view controller. But uh, there are certain aspects which sort of uh, differentiate it from the other MVC frameworks. And as he said, the major reason we chose to go ahead was its compatibility with JSON API schema. And uh, how, like, how is it serving a purpose uh, that we'll see? So the whole idea behind Amber is uh, convention over configuration. And that is a commonly used term, but people don't really get exactly what they're getting out of using those conventions. Conventions means more time to do what you could have done, but are we getting the output uh, we expected by, by delving into these con uh, conventions? So uh, this is a minimal representation of uh, how exactly uh, things go work around in Amber, and this is uh, this is true for mostly all of the MVC frameworks, right? So, in Amber, the key point is data down and actions up. This also uh, was uh, discussed by Dilpreet, and uh, he has already discussed the data, uh, the things regarding data in detail. Uh, so, as to why we should be following this approach, actions up. Uh, what does it uh, get us? Uh, like what it means to us? The general idea is that you don't want the data to be stored in a central place so that each time you have to, like, if at a lower level in your code you want to use that data, you, you don't want to make separate calls for that each time uh, it is being loaded. On the other hand, the actions, you want the logic to be in a single place. So if there are four components in a single template and they, each of them have four actions, instead of having four files in which you will write those four actions, you want them to be in a single logical place where you are controlling the entire logic of the application, hence the action support. So uh, he included all, almost uh, all the components present inside Amber. And like services is actually a major uh, part of it. Uh, it was like, not in this list, so I added it. So uh, <coughs> services, basically, service is a long-term Amber object. It, uh, it is active as long as you are running the application. It doesn't matter which page, which route you are on. Once you are into the session, the service object, like the service will exist. And the login part, the form validations part, all of these are ha being handled by the services. Now the biggest advantage of uh, doing it this way is that, let's say I want some, like, let's say there are 50 forms in the entire project, and each of them have, will have several validations. And I need that, okay, uh, the validations can be different. Like this is a, a email field, and uh, other might be a password field, so we'll uh, decide the logic according to them. But the, the basic functioning that the, when you are not satisfying the requirement of the validation, how the text field should turn red, how the form should uh, stop, how a mo model should pop up to stop you from submitting the form, citing the error. These are common, uh, like the code for this is common. The general idea is common, what to do when a validation fails. So services take care of uh, those kind of things. So there is a form service in Ember which uh, manages it uh, pretty well. 
So the output, like open event was working fine, is working fine. This event, uh, event here, like uh, the entire Fossacious Summit is uh, being hosted on the legacy code. But the thing is that legacy code was made on the go and different people contributed to it. And the end, as of this moment, the code got really scattered. Like uh, the backend is mixed, like completely coupled with the front end. And there is a lot of inline CSS, lot of styling flaws, lot of design flaws in, in that, how the code is structured. And for a new beginner, it's really difficult to just start contributing to it. And that's when this idea was born, as uh, Saptak uh, told in his talk, how, why we need to decouple uh, the backend and front end. So the end, like after following all those conventions, this is the kind of difference we achieved. Like these are, this, this code is for the, uh, the same file, the same exact file, and look at the difference in the clarity of the two. On the, on the front end, the template is a template, and on the back end, the JavaScript code is there, the handlebar tags are there, the styling is there. And uh, as I'll cover later, uh, Along with using Ember.js for the UI part, uh, Open Event Frontend uses semantic UI, and that is a like really robust uh, framework for uh, for UI things. And the best part is uh, that okay, I'll, I'll come back to it. Uh, the uh, semantic UI part. So, uh, take this for example. How conventions benefit us in the project? As we, like we define a module, as we covered in the talk. So in the module, you, this is a module for an event. And an event is related to a session. So our event has many sessions. And a session has a, belongs to an event. So the only thing I did was mention these two things. And this get request, that the URLs will be event slash, event ID slash sessions. I didn't have to manually specify the and this is uh, this was the key thing responsible uh, for us choosing Ember.js because the entire open event is uh, based on routes. There are a lot of routes, and the complexity of the routes is not that much because like we, they are logical relationships. That event will have many sessions. Session will have a venue, so the logical relationship was there. And by using Ember, we were able to skip the manual labor of code, actually coding, hard coding those routes. Like I don't need to specify these routes because the API follows the JSON API schema, and uh, Amber has a, a JSON API adapter. So all I have to do is specify the relationships. Like sessions has uh, like an event has many sessions. A session belongs to an event, and it will automatically generate the URL according to the JSON API schema. And like this code is uh, stable for long terms, as in even if the API specification changes, all we will have to do is change the adapter not the entire front end or like in the templates there's not a single line uh, which correlates to how the back end is supposed to work and then uh, like the best part about json api was that it is highly efficient for instance i want a list of events with several filters let's say they should belong to a particular track and on top of that uh, they should be within this location so the filtering is being handled on the back end and not on the front end. Like, it's not like I fetch a list of 100 events, then filter them according to my needs, and then display them like it is done for most of the Angular and other frameworks, uh, in, like it's how it's done over there. And what Amber makes it easy is specifying those filter queries. Like, if you look at them closely, all the filter queries, like uh, I, uh, this is a request for events. So I request that I want to query events, and then I include these things. Like, they won't be included by default. Whatever I include in the include clause, they get included, and they are fetched along with the event. So you can use them. Like, if I import events as event, then I can just, uh, just use event.tickets, and I'll get the list of the events tickets. And if I don't use this include clause, the tickets won't be fetched at all. So the scalability is there. Like, when the app scale, and when there are, instead of 100, there are 10,000 events, this will actually matter in terms of uh, how long the network requests take. Uh, similarly, uh, like there is page size, the uh, pagination is handled on the backend side as well. We don't have to worry about it, and like uh, that's that was the whole point. Like the f uh, fetching, how we are able to fetch the data uh, without actually hard coding the URLs and the efficient data usage that uh, makes Amber worthwhile well for this project. Then the, sim the thing with semantic UI is that it's an independent, robust, independent, robust UI framework. But uh, 
for uh, certain uh, JavaScript frameworks, it's all for special integrations. For instance, for Meteor, there is semantic UI Meteor. For Amber, there is semantic UI Amber. And that reduces the, uh, like that increases the code e efficiency even more. Because uh, when we are using an integration with, uh, like it's integration with semantic UI, I don't have to worry about typing the JavaScript side of uh, the semantic UI components. Like if there is a pop-up, there will be definitely a ja some JavaScript code. If I'm using the integration, I don't have to worry about it. These braces are enough for that. Like I just uh, open a curly brace, it's pop-up, I specify what, should, what options should be there, and that is done. And uh, the next slide, there will be comparison. Yeah, so here, like that code, that is three pop-ups right there. And all three pop-ups are doing three different things. And if I were not using with it with uh, its Amber integration, I was using normal semantic UI, these two combined will make the code for a single pop-up. So, so uh, like it was really, really well, it's pretty uh, compatible with Amber. And in general also, it's very responsive and the, it has gotten great community support recently, Semantic UI. And that's why we went ahead with Semantic UI. So, uh, like this seems like a good page. It's uh, looking uh, pretty great. It's completely responsive. Uh, that's a mobile screenshot. There are colors. Everything is padded. And the best part, like th generating this page didn't require a single line of CSS from our part. There's not a single line of CSS in this code. It's completely being ha handled by its, the default classes available in Semantic UI. And like that is really efficient. If you are able to generate uh, something like this without actually dabbing into CSS at all. And, that's, and the code look, looks much cleaner because of that. You can make any adjustments you want. And what we have, like as a best practice, what we have tried to incorporate is that in the open event front end project, we usually don't prefer any styling, like any extra styling uh, to be applied. The default classes are enough for our needs. Then uh, since Amber uses uh, components, uh, there is a potential for like extreme cases of code reusability. This, uh, these cards, like this is the uh, landing page of uh, open event and uh, the events are being displayed in cards. Uh, this uh, other page is on the explore route uh, it helps you search events according to your categories or search query. And this is the sessions route. And they use three different variations of the same component, and the code is entirely same. Like all I'm doing is changing what I'm passing into the component and some if else manipulations. So the size of the code base has been reduced exponentially in terms from migrating from uh, the previous uh, implementation. Like this is the code for the entire three pages. Uh, I only change what I pass in the module and it adjusts accordingly. Then Amber has a powerful CLI, so you don't have to worry about uh, boilerplate codes. Uh, like if you want to generate a component, all you write is Amber G component and the component name. And the component get generated along with its test files. So you just have to edit it. Testing on the Amber is, uh, testing on Amber is really easy. Like uh, I saw a booth of UI issues down uh, in the event hall and Amber sort of incorporates uh, by that logic only like if you see it says uh, visit this URL and then you visit the URL, URL. you can assert if uh, the current URL is equal like this uh, is a very simple test which, uh, which uh, checks that if the user is log in, logged in then which URL should be there if the user is, is not logged in uh, what should happen and uh, this test sort of confirms it. So there are acceptance tests, there are unit tests, you can write them custom, boilerplate code is there for the unit tests. So Testing is pretty easy. So right from the day one, when we started coding on this project, uh, we were encouraged to write tests, and we did write tests for the, all the components. The documentation for uh, Amber is excellent, because if you, all you have to do to get started with Amber is go to the official Amber website. There's an app which you can make, and that pretty much covers everything related to Amber, including Amber data. The, the community of Amber is very active. For instance, Anything we needed, which was not available by default in Amber, the add-on for it did exist. Like all we had to do was a simple Google search, state our requirements, and there are thousands of open source developers who have readily made components for us. For instance, uh, like uh, Scheduler is still pending to be implemented on the front end, 
and schedule, scheduler is something which requires extensive code coverage and combined with the complexity of writing in writing it in amber conventions it uh, it might become a gsoc project of its own of its own if someone were to write it from scratch and hence the mentors and it was decided that we are going to use an add on and it was readily available in open source uh, amber cri scheduler there are thousands of add ons for amber and they are being actively maintained so uh, lastly i'll uh, conclude by specifying some areas that you that you can work on right now like uh, if you are writing a proposal for gsoc or if you are just interested in contributing in general these are the areas which uh, are in active development as of this moment all of those uh, fact api integration is a great uh, beginning point for anyone who wants to contribute to the project because uh, there are all the apis sort of follow the same uh, way same structure that is implemented so thank you many questions thank you very much